Good day. In this presentation, I'm going to show you a short demo of what can be done with uh, IBM integration products, MQ&As, running on top of OpenShift and how to productionalize it. Uh, I'm really in debt to Callum Jackson. He's the uh, creator of this uh, demo. I'm just sort of showing what he has done for us. Because uh, IBM integration is difficult to show it's running you know, in the walls, uh, Callum has created an, an interface that uh, we think is quite powerful to show what is happening with integration. In this interface, it's uh, refreshing itself uh, every five seconds. It's showing the throughput of messages uh, into the system. So what we see here, very importantly at the top, we've got a, a web application that is uh, sending 250 TPS into the system. This is request uh, response messages, which as uh, NQ people will know, is when uh, you start stopping and starting queue managers. It is uh, quite difficult to make sure you get all the transactions done. This web interface is uh, talking to three AppConnect Enterprise or ACE uh, instantiations. Um, you'll see each one of them is uh, pulling about a, a third of the weight. This is an uh, HTTP call to ACE. ACE then translates that message into an MQ message and uh, it will send it out to two queue managers out there. Uh, they're running MQ version 9.3.0 and you can see each one of these queue managers is pulling a, a half of this TPS about 125 TPS. Now, the way we've been calling and round robining between these queue managers is with the MQ uniform cluster, which means that these applications, each one of them is connected with X number of threads uh, to the MQ cluster. Um, but the uniform cluster will redistrib redistribute the weight of the applications so that they will you know, self-balance. Behind this, we've got a core banking application. This uh, core banking application is uh, just uh, as an example. It will read the messages uh, from the, uh, the queue managers and then reply back. Uh, so we get around trip of 250 TPS um, per second. What you can see here is that the ACE uh, application sometimes goes up and down a, a little bit. It uh, depends on how many of the connections from this mobile app uh, each one of these environments are getting. It's just the HTTP uh, load balancer uh, that's doing that. So what we've got is uh, MQ is running in uh, high availability and um, ACE of course is, is running also in a, a high available cluster. What we're going to do is I'm going to switch to OpenShift and uh, inside OpenShift I'm going to grab, let's say, one of these ACE. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to kill one of these uh, ACE environments. Let's just grab this one here. Copy. I'm going to go over to my red at OpenShift in my pods. I'm going to search uh, for that pod. It says here it's running and uh, let me kill it. I'm going to delete this part, delete, and switch back to where our TPS throughput is showing us. You can see this uh, is the one that I've deleted. It's uh, dropping to zero throughput inside this ACE, but these two are sort of uh, picking up the slack and uh, the self-balancing uh, of the HTTP is sending more or less half of the traffic to each one of these. What is important is to watch this, the, mo the mobile app up here. Uh, it is not taking any knock whatsoever, so it's constantly sending 250 TPS through the system. Now Kubernetes behind the scenes has now started up the uh, third ACE again, and you see it is rebalancing again so that uh, every one of these three ACEs is getting more or less the same amount of transactions sending to them all the time while our front-end application is looking very stable. 
what you see here in MK, what is happening here, is that when this one ace is, uh, is coming back into the system, there was a little bit of an unbalance. Maybe it connected most of its threats to the first queue manager. But then after a while, the MQ uniform cluster has realized this, and it's sort of balancing out again so that both queue managers is pulling equal number of weight. Let's go and kill one of the MQs. I've got uh, UCQM1 running here. UCQM1. Um, what you'll see here, uh, it's picking up a UCQM2 as well, maybe because there's a 1 at the end. But this is the three Q managers that is forming up UCQM1. And this MQ native high availability is giving two additional copies running here, waiting to take over uh, if this Q manager fails. It's uh, making use of the quorum concept. So let's kill this uh, MQ. Going to delete the spot. Delete. Go back in this environment. Now MQ, because of the high availability, will start up very quickly after that failure. You'll see it drops down. This one is taking the load. There's no impact here at the top. And this Q manager is actually the uh, the other copy is started up, one of the HA copies, and it's taking over the load and it carries on as normal. Um, we're doing this uh, every five seconds or so. We're doing a query. So you can see this hasn't even dropped. Maybe it was just sort of between the five second drops. So that's why it doesn't go all the way down to zero. Um, you'll see some rebalancing in this area uh, as well here. A little dip in this one, but maybe um, some of most of his threads was connected to the, to the first queue manager, but everything looks perfectly okay uh, from this point onward again. And you'll see this guy up here, a steady 250 DPS through the system. What I'm gonna do uh, next is uh, this, is a notification service that's also tied into this application. This notification service will make use of um, MQ uh, sharing queues. Uh, what we're going to do is that in MQ version 9.3.0, um, there was uh, no sharing queues. So I need to upgrade MQ to a new version of MQ version 9.3.1. Um, I will also change the uh, little applications so that there's a sharing queue that will spit out messages that I'm going to send, say, to a notification service um, out there. So I'm going to change my MQ implementation as well as upgrading MQ all while all of my TPS of 250 TPS is going through the system. So I'm going to make this uh, slightly smaller so we can see the last bit as well. Um, there's a little button here. This button, when I click, will start the deploys for me. And uh, let's see what happens. I'll click on deploy. The way um, Calum has implemented this is if I go to my Red Hat environment, uh, it's doing it with pipeline. So there's a pipeline that uh, is kicking off. I'm clicking on pipelines. And you can see here is the pipeline running. Uh, busy with uh, tasks, one succeeded, one is still running, and three is pending. I look inside my pipeline runs. You can see it's a, made a clone of a, of a Git environment out there. It's actually deploying uh, MQ at the moment, and then it's going to uh, do a, a config ace change. It's going to deploy a new ace, and then it's going to deploy a new web UI. This is the web UI. You can see here now <coughs> there is busy upgrading to version 9.3.1. And uh, this one, this queue manager here is installed in version 9.3.0. Uh, it's then to an upgrading the um, high availability copies at the moment. Let me go back here. If I look at my bots workloads. And you see Q Manager 1. There you can see this uh, container creating on this uh, one of the high availability copies out here. You see now it's bringing down this queue manager, 
the second queue manager is taking over the load. One of the high availability copies will start up in a version 9.3.1. It start taking uh, some of the load. And they just about equalized out again. If I look at my where in the pipeline are we busy? Just finishing the MQ deploy. And uh, soon we'll see that the ACE has been uh, redeployed. And here you can see uh, there's been a new deployment. And you can see that half of the load, because only one queue manager has been upgraded so far, half of the load, uh, 125 uh, TPS, is coming through to my notification um, service. And you can see the second side, my second half of my queue manager, yeah, UCQM2, is now busy with upgrading. Well, my first side, UCQM1, is uh, now running at version 9.3.1. Note, no effect on the 250 TPS that's going through the system all the time. One of the reasons why it's taking slightly longer for MQ to upgrade is because, remember, MQ has got persistent messages and all those nice things. So it uh, needs to create um, storage for it, etc. There you've seen the second queue manager has just taken a dip. It's just, uh, one of the HAs has taken over. They're both running in version 9.3.1 now. And all of the traffic that is going through is now ending up inside my notification application. Um, when I do this demo, I usually say to the guys here, this is like uh, when you're driving between Johannesburg and Pretoria. And you've started out with a Ford Escort 4 liter when you arrive in Pretoria. Now I'm running a Ford Escort 6 liter car. So I've changed my engine on the flight. I'm feeling sorry for those guys that likes to do a lot of services or NQ services over weekends. Um, now you can just do this live while you're running in the system. As you can see, it's got no impact uh, on your transactions. The last little bit of this demo is uh, I'm going to actually start up another queue manager and another ACE. Maybe I've got more volume that I want to push through the system. So I'm going to click here on the little scale button uh, that will allow me and what behind the scenes I'm going to run uh, another uh, pipeline to create for me another MQ and another ACE. Let's click on scale. So what would I uh, expect to see when there's uh, more copies uh, uh, running of my middleware is that uh, the load that every one of these environments is carrying of my current 250 TPS will be uh, slightly less uh, for every one of the uh, individual queue managers and um, ACE uh, integration servers. So have a look at what's happening inside uh, my pipelines. You can see I've got another one running here now. It is busy uh, deploying uh, a new MQ, and then it's going to do the ACE after that and upgrade the web UI for me. Again, the MQ1 takes uh, a little bit longer to uh, implement because it needs to uh, uh, create storage and reserve storage and so on for those uh, MQ persistent messages. And there you can see the uh, third queue manager is starting to kick in. It's starting to take some of the load. These two are uh, busy now again with the MQ uniform cluster doing the uh, rebalancing. You see my TPS at the top stays constant at 250 TPS. And they've just about uh, rebalanced themselves. So I've done a very effective horizontal scaling of my queue managers sitting in the middle. It will be busy uh, deploying a new uh, ACE at the moment. This is just starting up or creating a new uh, container, so it should be um, faster. 
and there is the fourth ace kicking in you will see this HTTP will do a little bit of rebalancing here this application is there's some reconnects and disconnects that happen so it's taken a little bit of a knock coming down picking up the pace what is got behind and carrying on with 250 TPS there you see the rebalancing is taking place and the load is now spread to four different uh, ACE environments out here and the last bit is I'm going to just uh, add a bit of requests uh, to, to be sent out because we've got more capacity available now I click on the requests plus And you'll see I'm now doing 350 TPS per second. And every one of these environments is taking a little bit more messages through the system. So what have we done? We've uh, uh, killed uh, MQ and we've killed ACE without having an impact on the throughput of my system. Um, I've also upgraded MQ from 930 to 931. I've added a capability inside MQ for uh, uh, streaming queues. And uh, I've horizontally scaled both MQ and ACE all on the fly while there is production workload going through the system without impacting the system. And for this, we have to thank uh, Kubernetes, OpenShift, and the absolutely brilliant IBM integration software running in the middle. Thank you.